Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're taking a look at another gaming laptop, this time the brand new Alienware M15, which is their portable laptop offering to rival systems like the MSI G65 Stealth, the Gigabyte Aero 15 and Razer Blade. Historically, I haven't been a huge fan of Alienware's chunkier laptop designs, but the M15 is one of the best I've seen from the company so far. As always, let's talk specs to begin with. If you've seen reviews of this laptop from a few months ago, those were probably for the original model that used NVIDIA's GTX series Pascal GPUs. What I'm reviewing today is the RTX version, in particular, the RTX 2080 Max-Q model. But there are other options available that might suit your budget better, including the RTX 2070 Max-Q and RTX 2060. Like a lot of Dell laptops, the M15 is highly customizable. The CPU for most models stays the same as an Intel Core i7-8750H, but from there you get many storage, RAM and display options. My unit came with 16GB of dual channel DDR4, plus a combination of a 500GB SSD and a 1TB hard drive. The display is a 15.6 inch 1080p 144Hz IPS. The M15 is Alienware's most portable 15-inch gaming laptop design yet. While this is definitely a good thing, it's probably only good when comparing the M15 to Alienware's other laptops. For example, the regular Alienware 15 is 30mm thick and about 3.5 kilos heavy, whereas the Alienware M15 is about 27mm thick and crucially just 2.2 kilograms heavy. The weight difference in particular is massive, which makes the M15 a significantly more portable system. However, if you compare it to, say, the Gigabyte Aero 15, the Alienware 15 is larger in all dimensions. Gigabyte system is only 22mm thick using the same measurement system, and weighs just a tad over 2kg. It's also smaller in footprint due to slimmer bezels. The Alienware 15 really doesn't give you that awesome slim bezel design that we've seen from other gaming laptops, which keeps it larger than its competitors. I'd say this new unit is a big step forward for Alienware, but it's still got a way to go until it matches the best from its competitors. Something like the MSI GS65 is a good 400 grams lighter, and for some people that could be a better option. However, there is no faulting the build quality here, which is superb. This isn't a unibody construction, and there are a few different choices of materials, including metal for the lid, a soft touch matte plastic coating around the keyboard, and glossy plastic around the display. But the key here is just how seamless these materials join together. It just feels really solid and well built. Visually, this isn't my favourite design, mostly due to the angular body and gamery lid. It looks quite nice when opened, but it doesn't do enough to take the crown from the elegant MSI GS Stealth line. It's definitely the best Alienware design, and the focus on slimness has helped a lot here though. In other areas, Alienware has done a lot of things right. The keyboard has a nice, though somewhat spongy tactile response. However, the layout is good, and it includes a full numpad plus four macro keys. The entire thing is lit up with four zone RGB backlighting. There's two other RGB elements as well, the power button and Alien Head logo on the lid. The trackpad is a little small given the space allocated to it, but it has a nice coating and it is very responsive. The I.O. selection here is fantastic. We're getting three USB 3.1 Type-A ports, Thunderbolt 3, HDMI 2.0, mini display port, a 3.5mm audio jack, Ethernet, and Alienware's graphics amplifier port. I particularly like that the display outputs are on the rear of the laptop. It's nice and convenient to hook up a display there without obstructing either side. Let's talk about performance, and as always, it's important to set the scene here with the settings I used. The main consideration here are the fan profiles, with Alienware providing four options, balanced, which is the default option, plus cool, quiet, and performance modes. I didn't spot any significant difference between the balanced and the top tier performance modes because both seem to ramp up the fan to the same level while gaming. The performance mode simply sets this fan speed at all times, while balanced quietens the fan during less intensive workloads. My recommendation here is to use the balanced mode and that's what I used throughout this review. When it comes to CPU performance, my main consideration here is to see whether the Alienware M15 performs any differently in productivity tasks compared to other laptops that use the Intel Core i7-8750H. What I discovered is that the laptop performs identically to our average 8750H benchmark numbers, suggesting the system is performing as expected. Across each workload, it's a little slower sometimes and a little faster at other times, but on average there is nothing to be concerned about here. It does perform as expected. 
This means we're getting all the usual benefits of the Core i7-8750H. As it's a six core CPU, it's ideal for tasks like video editing in on the go, where it's 40 to 50% faster than a last generation Core i7-7700HQ CPU. It's also fast in single threaded workloads by around 10%, which does help reduce CPU bottlenecks in some games. Where the interesting stuff starts to happen is with the GPU. Here we're looking at the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Max-Q in its 90 watt configuration, at least in my review unit. If you aren't aware, there are actually two versions of the RTX 2080 Max-Q that have been spotted, the default 80 watt configuration and the 90 watt model, which has a higher power limit and is clocked about 100 to 200 megahertz higher. It's almost impossible to tell which version a laptop uses from its product page, but we can tell you here that the M15 uses the faster 90 watt model. If you've seen my review of the GeForce RTX 2080 Max-Q, you'll see how both the 80 watt and 90 watt versions perform in a range of games. However, with the Alienware M15, it's a bit more complicated than that because while the laptop does have the 90 watt version, its cooling solution in a typical use case prevents it from unleashing the full power of this GPU. Even with the fans at full speed, there just isn't enough of a gap between the base of the laptop and the desk to intake air at the volume required to cool these components. Most of the intake vents are along the bottom panel, with a few tiny vents on the top side, with air then exhausting out the back and sides. But thanks to the feet raising this laptop by a smaller than usual height and fewer vents on the top side of the laptop, we are running into a few airflow bottlenecks. What this means is the Alienware M15 in a typical usage environment on your desk is 4% slower on average than the maximum performance the RTX 2080 Max-Q 90 watt variant is capable of. This is a pretty disappointing result given Alienware have gone to the trouble of including the faster 90 watt model. It's actually a bit strange that we're getting the 90 watt variant only to see it choked due to the cooler design. However, it is possible to get the full performance of the 2080 Max-Q if you raise the base of the laptop slightly, which gives the bottom vents less restricted access to airflow. You don't have to change any other laptop settings, you just have to make this physical adjustment. If you do this, the cooler performs much better and you get the full performance of the GPU inside. However, it's not a very practical solution. I feel this issue could have been resolved with a better optimized series of vents around the design. For the rest of this data, I'm showing how the Alienware M15 performs without the base race because I feel this is how most people will use the laptop. The good news is that when sitting on your desk normally, the Alienware M15 performs around the same as the RTX 2080 Max-Q 80 watt variant, so it's not choked to the level that it performs below a typical RTX 2080 Max-Q. It's merely the same. You don't get the benefit of the 90 watt configuration, but it's not throttling so hard that you aren't getting a decent level of performance. And I guess the good news is that by Alienware choosing the 90 watt model, you can actually achieve better performance if you give the cooler better airflow. Laptops that use the 80 watt model can't push much faster, even in optimal cooling positions. With the Alienware M15 performing roughly the same as an 80 watt RTX 2080 Max-Q, the margins between this laptop and other GPUs is pretty similar to what I showed in my review. It's 10% faster than the RTX 2070 Max-Q on average, so if you are tossing up between the various Alienware M15 GPU configurations, this might be data that will interest you. The other available GPU is the RTX 2060. Here the RTX 2080 Max-Q is 16% faster on average, although it doesn't win in every game. For example, in Hitman 2, it is unusually slow with the Alienware M15 compared to the average result for other laptops we've tested. On the other hand, there is a significant lead in games like Shadow of War, where the 2080 Max-Q is more than 30% faster. The Alienware M15 was previously available with the GeForce GTX 1070 Max-Q inside. This new RTX 2080 Max-Q model is a decent 24% faster on average, which as I've mentioned before, is an impressive improvement from the same sort of cooler design and form factor. The RTX 2080 Max-Q models are a lot more expensive, but that's typical for premium hardware. And finally, we have the comparison between the RTX 2080 Max-Q and the standard GTX 1070 for laptops. The RTX 2080 Max-Q is 6% faster on average, but it's a bit of a mixed bag. It wins in some titles and loses in others. It's definitely not a situation where the RTX 2080 demolishes the GTX 1070, which is the case when comparing the desktop variants of these GPUs. Here is the data showing the Alienware M15's cooling solution really isn't up to scratch for the hardware inside. GPU temperatures are actually okay without being great, 84 degrees Celsius is fine for most gaming laptops, but it's the CPU temperatures that are seriously crazy, with the M15 hitting 99 degrees during a Watch Dogs 2 gaming session. Anytime a laptop is up around that 100 degree mark, 
you're gonna get throttling. So with this laptop, it's not GPU throttling that's the primary issue, it's mostly CPU throttling. Raising the laptop's base, which provides more airflow to the choked cooler without increasing fan speed, sees a significant seven degree drop on the CPU and a similar drop on the GPU, but it's actually more than that. CPU clock speeds also increase by 500 megahertz or so across all six cores. It's a huge difference and just shows how, in a standard usage case, this cooler cannot keep up with the demands of the high TDP parts inside. Without that CPU bottleneck, we see the full performance of these components unleashed. And it's no surprise why the Alienware M15 can't push the fan any faster. We're already sitting at 46 dBA during a gaming load, which is on the high end for a gaming laptop. So this system is both hot and loud, giving basically no room to move. If you're hoping to overclock this system, well, there's really no headroom for that. Those that like to undervolt and replace the thermal compound with something like liquid metal may be able to get more out of this cooler design. It's also possible that lower tier GPUs like the RTX 2060 won't run into this same thermal bottleneck, but it's hard to say for sure without testing those units. Moving on to storage performance, my Alienware M15 came equipped with a 512GB SK Hynix PC401 SSD, which performed pretty well, no real complaints here. It's not the absolute fastest gaming SSD I've seen in laptops, uh, particularly for sequential workloads, but it's adequate enough for most people. Battery life was pretty disappointing though. The M15 comes with two battery options. If you want a one terabyte hard drive inside, you get just a 60 watt hour cell, which is the default, which was the case with my review unit. If you forgo the 2.5 inch drive base slot, you can increase the battery capacity to 90 watt hours, which no doubt delivers better results than the disappointing sub four hour runtime in our video playback test. Given that internally you get two M.2 slots, one of which was free in my unit and both of which are easily user accessible, I think most buyers would be better off opting for the 90 watt hour model and using cheap M.2 storage options to get extra space if necessary, especially if you want better battery life, which I feel is important in a portable oriented system like the M15. Lastly, we have the display, and like a lot of similar laptops, Alienware are using a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS with a maximum refresh rate of 144Hz. The combination of IPS and 144Hz works really well here for gamers. The high refresh rate is perfect for the RTX 2080 Max-Q that often pushes frame rates above 100fps at 1080p, so this really is the display option you'll want to choose. A lot of the basic characteristics here are good. 300 nits of peak brightness is fine for indoor use, especially as that's combined with excellent viewing angles. A contrast ratio of 1200 to 1 is also great for this type of display. However, I did experience a bit of IPS glow when viewing dark or black content. Not a huge issue, but something to keep in mind. The bigger problem with this display is the lack of color calibration. The default white point is around 8000K, which is far too cold, giving the display a blue tone. In fact, there really doesn't appear to be any calibration here whatsoever, at least not to the sRGB standard, as Delta E averages across the board are above 4.0. Normally for gaming laptops, I don't find calibration to be a big issue, but with the Alienware M15, it's a little different. Delta E's are above 4.0, and that's higher than many other laptops, particularly the 5.7 grayscale Delta E average, so this display is particularly poorly calibrated. And on top of this, many competitors to this very type of system, especially the MSI GS65 and Gigabyte Aero 15, do come with factory calibrated displays. So while it may not bother every buyer, calibration is something you don't get here that other laptops will provide. Overall, I'm in two places with the Alienware M15. On the one hand, this is clearly their best laptop design. It's thinner and lighter than regular Alienware laptops, and that's a step in the right direction, particularly as many other gaming laptop companies have this sort of system on the market. I've never been a huge fan of the chunky Alienware beasts from a design perspective, but this focus on portability here is welcome. On the other hand, I feel Alienware has failed to execute in terms of some of the performance characteristics. In particular, the cooler simply isn't powerful enough to cool both the Core i7-8750H and RTX 2080 Max-Q without throttling. There's an airflow issue here that chokes the CPU, causing lower than expected performance when both the CPU and GPU are utilized like in games. This is very disappointing because you don't get these problems with competing Gigabyte or MSI laptops. In fact, in both cases, the Alienware M15 is a larger and heavier overall than the Aero 15 or GS65 Stealth, while having less cooling capacity. 
Performance isn't terrible, it's still around the mark of a typical RTX 2080 Max-Q laptop, it's just that it could have been better, especially as this laptop includes the 90 watt variant of the GPU. For future revisions of this laptop, the cooling layout and ventilation definitely need to be fixed. Then there's just a range of other odds and ends that aren't as polished as competing offerings. The display isn't calibrated and doesn't pack a slim bezel design, and the default option to get a small 60 watt hour battery means that you don't get great battery life and you have to pay to get a larger battery. I just don't see what the Alienware M15 does better than a laptop like the MSI GS65. There's no key feature here that might get me to recommend it in some situations like, say, a super affordable price, or a unique design, or top tier performance. In every metric I've tested, the system is beaten by the excellent MSI option, which is basically the same price for an equivalent configuration regardless of which RTX GPU you choose. And this is without discussing the overall value proposition of Nvidia's Turing laptops. So while the Alienware M15 is a great step forward for the company, it ultimately doesn't get my recommendation. It's hard to create the perfect portable system on the first attempt, and the guys at MSI, Gigabyte and others have simply been doing this for longer and have more refined, better options today that you should consider instead. That's it for this review of the Alienware M15. We have all the links to the laptops I've been talking about in this video in the description below. Consider subscribing for more gaming laptop content. We also have a Patreon page where you can get access to unique perks. And I'll catch you in the next one.